I was there for almost seven, almost seven, almost eight years. Uh, wasn't married. I was living with my wife to be at the time. We got married when I was there. She was younger than me. Wanted to have children. Uh, I'd had a vasectomy. Had a reversal. Tried to, tried to uh, have pregnancy. Went to fertility clinics and what have you. Anyway, long story short, uh, after all these efforts, we talked even about possible adoption and all. She came up pregnant with twins. And uh, we subsequently uh, had a, uh, another daughter after that. And it changed my life in that I was always the wrestling business 24-7. But when these children, and I, I had twins when I was 50. The boy has cerebral palsy, special needs. Thank God he's cognitively smart kid, graduated from college along with his sister. His disability is limited to some weakness with his one left side, with his hand and leg. He can't walk independently. He could walk with a walker when he was younger, but he's in a power wheelchair. And he, to this day, he's 25 years old, lives with me. Great kid. Love that boy. And uh, it just, I had to balance my, my life. And sometimes Vince could look at that and think, well, and Vince would talk in the third person sometimes and he'd say, you don't like Vince anymore? God, no, Vince, it's not that. I love the business. My passion for the business is no less. And then there were some other factors too. He had hired a, a woman to, uh, into an executive position and in structuring the company, I reported to her. And she knew I was married, she was a little older, and she, as I talk off the record, could I have made a case possibly for reverse sexual harassment? I think I could have. The point is I was very uncomfortable. Minor example, she would travel with us on the private jet after we would do TV. And we would go, we'd get there at like 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, Vince would have a limo waiting there to take him to the gym to work out. And, you know, we'd, it would be Pat, Vince, her and I, and she would, at the front desk, and yell out to everybody, make sure I get a room next to JJ. Just little things that, uh, you know, what are these guys thinking? There's nothing to think but. And then, like at the garden, she lived in Manhattan or to go somewhere, or one of the TVs close by. And I reported to her, and I was expected to drive into Manhattan, pick her up at her apartment. And she knew I had a sweet tooth, so she'd have a little gift bag of candies and chocolates that I liked. And I was like, oh man. I wonder what everybody else was thinking, and there was nothing to think. But it just was a lot of things that weren't right. And I think with Vince, he's a 24-7 guy. And when you work with somebody 24-7, and I talk to other people, it seems like, you know, they talk about the seven-year itch in a marriage. With Vince, it's like if you have a relationship where you're so heavily involved, I had dinner at his house with his family. It's like, Something happens after seven years, it's like, whew, I, I, I just, I can't do this any longer. I need to do something else. I don't know if that makes sense to you or not, but that was, that was how I was feeling. And it wasn't personal events. There were some other things that, uh, that I don't want to talk about, but I owe a lot to Vince McMahon, Linda McMahon, and the, the whole family. I watched the children grow up. I'm a better person professionally and, and personally as a result of that experience of working with Vince for seven years. The brilliant man. He doesn't ask you to do anything that he's not doing. 
Is it demanding? Yes. And you never stop learning in this business. And I learned from Vince McMahon because he's been, he's, he's, he has established the dominant worldwide brand in our industry. Brilliant guy. And I'm better, like I say, for the time that I was with him. But it was something that wasn't in the, in the cards to, to be forever.